You are watching the press preview, a first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. It's time to see what's making the headlines with the Daily Mirror's associate editor, Kevin Maguire, and the Telegraph's deputy comment editor, Annabelle Denham. They'll be with us from now until just before midnight. So let's see what's on some of those front pages for you now. Well, the Metro has the striking one-word headline, intolerable, quoting Rishi Sunak's reaction to the killing of three British aid workers in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. The Eye reports that Gaza has now plunged into a new aid crisis. On the front of The Guardian, former Supreme Court judges join a group of 600 lawyers and academics who say the government is breaching international law by continuing to arm Israel. The Express reports on Rishi Sunak threatening to remove the UK from the European Court of Human Rights if his Rwanda plan is blocked. That story is also on the front of The Sun. Judges to look at soft terms for deprived offenders. That's on the front of The Telegraph. The Mail says that at least a dozen MPs, their staff members and political journalists have been targeted in a cyber honey trap scandal. The Times reports on a new blood test to help spot Alzheimer's years before diagnosis. The Financial Times hears that Google is exploring the idea of launching an AI-powered search engine behind a paywall. And The Star reports on a huge hunt to find King Arthur's lost sword. And a reminder that by scanning the QR code you'll see on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. And we are joined tonight by Kevin Maguire and Annabelle Denham. Welcome again to both of you. Um, let's start with uh, Gaza, uh, the, that front page of the eye showing the devastation, the story about the aid workers, the seven aid workers, uh, humanitarian aid workers, that have been killed in an Israeli strike. Um, New crisis, a turning point. How would you describe where we are now, Kevin? It's a huge crisis. It's a worsening crisis. Look at that picture on the front of, uh, of the eye. Forget uh, the earthquake in Taiwan. If you want devastation, it is in Gaza, where Israeli forces have absolutely pulverised uh, the place, which is why there are accusations of ethnic cleansing and genocide, 33,000 people dead. Uh, vast majority women and children and of course about 200 aid workers had been previously killed but of course the seven included uh, six uh, from the developed world uh, three of them Britons which is why it's now getting so much uh, attention but as the eye points out because aid uh, groups have had to pull out now pull their people out because it's not safe that means the humanitarian crisis will be worse because Israel is accused, and I think with good evidence, of using starvation as a, a weapon, which is unlawful, breaching humanitarian law. Uh, and kids are dying of malnutrition, and all that will, will get worse. No, it's absolutely horrific. It's why the eyes, eyes of the world are on it, and I think people are turning against uh, the Israeli government, even people who've supported it in the past. Mm. I, I mean, I think that's right. I think, mm. obviously, the image just portrays the utter devastation, the destruction wrought on this strip of land that's being reduced to glass and rubble. And, of course, we talked a lot earlier on in this conflict about evacuating uh, people from Gaza, uh, perhaps into Egypt. But the question was always, what would they be returning to once the war had potentially been won by Israel, once they had achieved their objective of rooting out Hamas, as Kevin says, thousands of civilian lives have been lost, not least these seven aid workers in what is a terrible tragedy. These are people who were giving up uh, their time, who are working to protect and look after complete strangers, and they lost their lives in the process. So no wonder there is such outrage, not least among uh, some of Israel's strongest allies, the US and the UK. The question now is how will well, Britain in particular respond to this? Will there be some kind of arms sanction? Rishi Sunak certainly under a lot of pressure to implement one, but at the moment he is holding his position that he wants there to be a thorough investigation. Labour, meanwhile, want to hear the government's uh, legal advice as to whether international law has been 
broken. I suspect, and especially if you look at the cover of mm. The Guardian with that letter from uh, court judges, uh, former Supreme Court judges, uh, just really tightening the screws, that it may not be long before Rishi Sunak buckles. You've got to say, we're coming up to the sixth anniversary of that uh, horrific Hamas pogrom on October the 7th when more than a thousand Israelis were, were killed, uh, raped, uh, 250 or so hostages taken, and Benjamin Netanyahu and his killing rage, as Ben Wallace, the former British defence minister, described it, has not achieved his aims. As far as we're aware, he hasn't uh, killed the uh, Hamas leadership, never, never mind destroyed uh, Hamas as an organisation. Uh, and the hostages, a uh, hundred or so, uh, hopefully are still alive, but are still being held and trapped. I mean, it's, you, know, you, you look at it from Israel's point of view, they may be hoping to drive the Palestinians out somehow, but they have, they have failed at the moment in their war aims six months in. Mm. Uh, and this letter that, that um, you referred to, Annabelle, the three former Supreme Court justices, uh, that's including the former President uh, Brenda Hale, they're amongst um, 600 uh, lawyers, academics and retired senior judges warning that the government is actually breaching international law by continuing to, to arm Israel. That's right. I mean, I think we need to bear in mind that uh, our arms trade with Israel is about 0.02% of their total, uh, around 60% is from the US, 30%, I believe, is from Germany, 1% from Italy. So we are providing a very, very small fraction of that. It would be more of a symbolic gesture uh, at this stage to really show that we're taking a robust response, that our support for Israel in its aims is wavering. But Kevin, of course, mentioning the six-month anniversary of that terrible pogrom mm -hmm. of, on October 7th. The issue is and re remains that if Israel lays down its arms and bears its neck for slaughter, then Hamas will regroup and they will attack. Again, this is a terrorist organisation with a genocidal aims. And while you know, we're talking about international pressure on Netanyahu, of course, there's also domestic pressure on him. And many Israelis are deeply unhappy with the way that this conflict is progressing. But they are also profoundly uncomfortable with having Hamas as their neighbours and do not want to live in fear that there will be another terrorist attack once they've had the opportunity to yeah. rearm. So it's, it's an extremely difficult the, the situation. Six, the 600 lawyers, academics, retired judges, including Baroness Hale, as you, as you mentioned, really probably famous for her, for her brooch in the ruling that Boris Johnson yes. wrongly prorogued Parliament, suspended Parliament. Their argument is the International uh, Court of Justice ruled there is a um, plausible accusation of genocide and so for, therefore if you're supplying arms you are assisting that genocide and you have found that uh, the, the British public 56% uh, think there should be uh, an arms ban only 17% not now. Mm. Israel had a huge amount of support and sympathy six months ago um, I think the sympathy is, is still has to go out to those who, the families of those who were, were killed by Hamas, those who were raped, uh, injured, uh, the hostages. That, that sympathy is still there, but I think the state of Israel itself, Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli forces and their behaviour in, in Gaza is costing the country sympathy now. Mm. According to the Guardian, party sources believe that uh, Foreign Secretary David Cameron has pushed for the government to harden its approach to Israel, but has been met with resistance from number 10. But yet, in The Times, uh, we see that the uh, PM refuses to rule out halting arms sales to Israel. Which should we be to believe, Annabelle? Well, I mean, it, it, you know, impossible to say at this situation, uh, at this stage, um, but at the moment it certainly looks like Rishi Sunak is resisting that pressure. He is maintaining his position that um, Israel must abide by international law. Uh, one expects that his faith is uh, faltering now. It certainly looks like the IDF, which has been absolutely insistent that it goes to far greater lengths than any other military in trying to preserve 
preserve uh, human life, trying to preserve uh, civilian life, it, the suggestion now is that they're not adhering to mm -hmm. uh, protocols that perhaps they were at the start of the conflict. Certainly, mm -hmm. this tragedy uh, on Monday looks like a you know terrible uh, error, a misjudgment, a mistake, but it's simply unforgivable. And the problem, of course, that Rishi Sunak has is that three Britons were killed. So that really brings it home. Kevin talked about public support for Israel and its objectives. Of course, that's going to waver when it is Brits who are giving their lives to try and help those living in a war zone. Um, so one can only expect that Rishi Sunak, you know, is going to come under an immense amount of strain over the next few days. P PM refuses to rule out halting arms sales to Israel mm. means PM's going to maintain arms sales to Israel. That's, that's what it mm. means. He, not ruling it out, well, you, you haven't stopped them, so you're still doing well, it. Well, he's saying that, you know, he's, he's confident and what he's really calling for is an investigation, <laughs> an urgent investigation before, you know, any yeah, further decisions still, are taken. He is, he is still given the green light for arms sales to Israel. That's what, he, that's what he's doing, despite the warning by the 600 judges, academics and others, that, that means he could be complicit, the UK could be complicit in genocide. That's a choice he's, that's a choice he's made. Strong words. I think it's the um, wrong choice, but... Well, I think you know, he's got made. to go on the legal advice that's provided to Which he hasn't published. Which he hasn't no. published, but it might be highly sensitive information. However, it's the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Alicia Kearns, yeah. has also alluded uh, to the fact that there may be some breach of international... Annabelle and yes. Kevin so. with me, Kevin Maguire and Annabelle Denham. Let's take a look at the Sun front page and the headline there. Uh, Rishi, he's saying, I'll quit Euro court. This is if uh, there are any more attempts to uh, thwart his uh, Rwanda plan, Kevin. Really? Oh, this, this is for the criminally gullible. Like, he's just fought part of his own party uh, not to go down this route. The Rwandan government said it wouldn't be party to the deal if it didn't comply with international law. And if he did decide to try and do this, I think he'd have to get himself a new foreign secretary, probably a home secretary and a lot of other cabinet ministers who don't want to stop the world and try to get off. The other thing he, he does, he calls it a foreign court. It's not a foreign court. It's an international court of which we're members of. The Supreme Court in the US is a foreign court, mm. but it's, it's no more a foreign court, because we, we helped found it and we're part of it, and say the United Nations is a foreign organisation, or rules of the sea are foreign rules that we're part of. It's an organisation, remember, so it's not a foreign court, Prime Minister. He's, an, he's, an, he's, an, he's an idiot at times, but he's just trying to inflame people and mislead them. Do you think yeah, this is a hollow threat, threat, then? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you, you get a bit sick. I mean, he knows it's not a foreign court, it's an international court, because we're members of it. What he's alluding uh. to is the fact that rights perhaps ought to be protected by domestic institutions and laws rather than by the ECHR. And the problem the Conservatives has, well, they've got, you know, many, many problems, as these polls <laughs> show. Uh, one of the issues is that, rewind to 2016, one of the motivating factors, people voting for Brexit, was that they wanted to uh, take control of our borders and wanted to restore sovereignty. Unfortunately, Miranda, the totemic policy of this government encapsulates both of those. If they cannot get Rwanda off the ground, they cannot be seen to be doing something to stop the boats. And I have my doubts over whether this scheme is actually going to make any difference. We'll probably only see a couple of hundred people go to Kigali if, if, if indeed it does succeed. I think succeed. If, if one person goes, um, I think... Rishi Sunak would count that at success, as a success. He? He'd one, win his to bet. one play. Well, that's morning. why they were offering um, three grand for volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> We've only got a, a minute. Um, right. Let's get to this dreadful polling for the Conservative Party. Kevin. It is. Uh, um, that to um, Tony Blair's landslide is likely to be almost matched by Keir Starmer, which is an astonishing achievement when you consider 2019 Labour got the fewest MPs since uh, 1935, and yet they could get a, a majority on this YouGov poll of 154, nudging uh, Blair's, I think it was 179, but Jeremy Hunt would lose his seat. Mm. Penny Morden would lose her seat. It just gets worse and worse. It's poll after poll now. 
for the for the Conservatives. It's you can't just say there's a rogue poll. No, it's not a nightmare. There Armageddon. is a pattern. Yeah. And unfortunately, each poll seems to be almost worse than last. Fine, we had one at the weekend that put the Tories at, le at fewer than 100 seats. I think they got 98 yeah. seats, whereas this one is saying around 150. It but does it's... seem to be getting worse and worse, as you say, for the Conservatives. At Kevin and Annabelle, mm -hmm. thank you very much.